CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Um, so here, here was what I was thinking you were going to do tonight. Um, we're going to finish the two budgets we have left, which is insurance and water and sewer. Um, and then uh, in connection with doing water and sewer, we're going to hand Article 43 and 44 for the water main and sewer main warrant article. Um, and there are a couple of other warrant articles that are pretty minor and quick that I'd just like to get done, finished with. Um, and then we'll go back to the more substantial articles that we have uh, left to talk about in you know, the, the remainder of the committees and working groups whose budgets we still need to approve. Unfortunately, I thought I would start with Carolyn doing insurance. Um, Grant, can you do water and sewer right now? Jeez, start off. I'm, I, don't we wait until like 10 of 10 or something? Oh, I, 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 okay. Questions, I don't know. Uh, oh, all right. Well, or yours for two yeah. hours. No, no, no. no. Oh, well, that's right. I need more time now. Um, can we do the articles first? That's fine with me. Okay. Uh, and by the way, I meant to say this before you're on the, but a uh, certain Brian Ferrer says hello to everybody. He knows him. I spoke to him a couple of days ago. What did he do? Uh, says that we're the gold, our finance committee just deconsiders it the gold standard <laughs> among finance. Okay. Did he sell anybody out? Take <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> what do you want? Does this sound like an uh, old and aged or something? But that was, he didn't spoke about all of us in that regard. Um, again, he's the, uh, Deputy town manager for a little bit. Yeah. Deputy town manager for a little bit. And he was acting town manager for a while. And uh, I want to point out to people that he also used to do the water and sewer budget. He did. So, so, you have, so that's your future. <laughs> if, <laughs> you if, if you want to join, life. so come on, join up. You can either be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so look, Article 43, uh, we had a, a question from the public regarding uh, this article as well. Not sure we're going to bring it up, but let me mention the article first. Um, article 43 is the uh, appropriation for reconstruction of sewer mains and sewer facilities. And uh, what we asked the town to appropriate 900,000. And um, the water and sewer uh, puts in, the budget puts in 100,000. So we spend a total of um, essentially 1 million. But we're asking the town in this article for 900,000. That's for sewer. Sewer. Yeah, I don't, why these things are ordered this way in the warrant, uh, we'll have to ask John about that. Uh, actually, sewer always comes with full water in, in, the, in the budget and the articles because it's alphabetically first. Um, why don't we uh, move on to 44 as well? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Article 44 is the reconstruction of water mains. We have you know, water mains and sewer drains. And um, this uh, uh, asking for the town for um, 1.5 million, or 1,500,000. Know, and in the same situation, uh, the water and sewer puts in 100,000 from their budget. Could you say the amount again? Sorry. Uh, no problem. Nine hundred thousand. Okay. For or, I'm sorry. Article forty three is nine hundred thousand. Article forty four is um, one million five hundred thousand. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, public asked the question. I want to address it because um, it's a good question and uh, the right to have it addressed. Uh, I think we everyone had to take uh, had a look at it, and uh, there was a bit to it. But uh, essentially, there were two questions that he asked: uh, Will any funds appropriated? He also asked about Article Thirty Nine. But would any funds appropriated in the Articles Forty Three and Forty Four be used for legal expenses for a permit challenge? And the answer to that is no. 
will not be. And uh, the second question is, um, uh, let's skip the first uh, part and just say, can DPW state that water and sewer projects contemplated in those two articles will achieve their full service life? Or will some of those funds waste it? Um, so Mike's answer, which was very well written, I could just read it. It's essentially the bones of it is, this is focused for re replacing water mains and sewer drains. And uh, um, Mike says, uh, he doesn't believe any money spent on these projects would be wasted as the scope of repairs would not change based on possible climate change impacts. Um, so that was the gist of the two questions. Um, there's a little, some other questions that Mike uh, said he wanted some more time and maybe he could develop a more thoughtful response. But those are the, the two answers to the two questions that were asked. Um, so with that. Jennifer, you have a question? Yeah, I just have a question. So these numbers have been pretty steady over the last few years. And I've often heard that we're doing by the mile um, each time, but after they're cost inflated. So is that is that true? Can we sort of do the same math that we did a few years ago, or are we doing less? Do you have any idea? Yes. Oh, and by the way, did you ever get the emails that I, I did, I got them. I got them this, after. This I got the original one, but this one I did, yeah. Okay. This was in. Um so um I asked the same, something similar to that, um, um, and how they do it. Um, I think, let's see, um, <laughs> uh, let's see. As our sewer system is vast and continually aging, we will always have a program of investigating sewer lines and making necessary repairs. But the work is prioritized for areas where pipe deficiencies are allowing groundwater That's the key, I think, which is causing us to uh, pay to treat clean water as opposed to, uh, well, they wouldn't be in your Um It doesn't say exactly how much. And just wondering if we're doing less, we're, yeah. we're level funding this, you know, and what costs are going to have. Yeah. If we actually are covering less of how many we have for this year. Um, it said somewhere along the line, okay. Our ultimate goal, see, he makes the distinction between line pipe and unlined pipe. And the lining is a, I got to say this, serendipitous, serendipitous product that is present on all new pipe installed. Um, so they need to replace all the unlined pipe. And about 50 miles of the 130 miles is unlined. And pipe is not a forever material. They really always need to break replace it. His comment here is if we continue to only replace one mile a year, so I'm making the presumption that that is continuing one mile a year, but his concern is if we continue to only replace that, we'll end up with a 30 year old pipe throughout town before it is again in play. We won't get there. More reasonable goal would be, bless you, 1.5 or two miles. <laughs> So that our oldest pipe at any time is only 65 to 85 years. <laughs> and this sort of is a trend, I think. This would require a doubling of funds in order to do that. So I guess the quick answer is, yeah, we're doing the same miles, but it isn't, it's kind of a theme for like we heard with the water bodies and stuff. We're not going to get there. And if we double the amount, we get some. Good question about an article 20. Uh, three and forty-four, Charlie, and then John. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the, the new replacement pipes aren't they made of uh, some sort of polymer, you know, like polybond or something like that? It's the, the old pipes were either clay or iron or lead, and they had a lot of problems with uh, tree infiltration. Mm. And the new ones are, you know, some sort of uh, fossil fuel-based plastic. Yeah. yeah, and they have a much longer life. Uh, so I don't think that the analogy is perfect. No, he's only talking about the lining, the lining of it, not the not what it's actually made of. Because I guess the sediment, uh, the uh, the unlined pipe builds up more sediment. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but the, the stuff. 
collapse right. to it, but the new pipes don't have, you know, the, with their uh, material is much, I mean, you use a layman's term, smoother, you know, yeah. and they wouldn't leak as much. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Alan Jones. I, I just thought for the benefit of new people, you might explain where the bulk of the money comes from and how it how it's paid off the borrowing and the debt service. Um okay. or you can quote out those charges. No, um you mean um you mean with the MBTA yeah. um interest-free loans? Yeah. yeah. One of the reasons why it's increasing. Oh, that's right. I put that in the um but it, it, it's in the recommended vote, but it's not you might. Right, and also I put that in the uh, primer that I said about the was sad and stuff like that. But one of the reasons it's increasing is because we want to borrow more of the interest free loans from the MBTA. MWR. Wouldn't it be nice if it was the MBTA? The MWR. Because obviously it's interest free and we don't have to pay uh, interest back as opposed to the interest bearing ones where we do. So that's why the water side has increased a little bit because we're trying to shift that. I think the sewer side has increased a little bit too. But yeah, that's the gist is we like to borrow a lot from the. Uh, so, for example, for the sewer, we borrow a million from the MWRA interest free and then we pay it back with the water and sewer. Mm -hmm. the, the water and sewer. Yes, the water and sewer budget pays that back. That's right. thought it'd be good to clarify. Uh, thank you for that, Alan. Always coming you guys. Now, we want to take a break because Carolyn's here. No, go ahead. Keep it going. Right. Uh, it's a grand. Any other questions on? These two, one. All right. Um, well, I was going to make a motion. Then, go ahead. But, uh, sure. Um, so, with that, I'd like to move the the, the committee uh, appropriate or, or report that we uh, appropriate nine hundred thousand for Article Forty Three and one point five million for Article Forty Four. Second. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Right. No, on okay. Uh, does anybody need? Um, I printed out four copies in case somebody would like a copy. Sure. Um, separate the budget and the attachments because it could be able to. Separate. Anybody else want? Alan, anybody want a copy? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, okay. So the first thing I wanted to do, uh, do was the fun. Uh, what's in the fun? I got all this stuff all paper in front of me now. Um, Tara, I have a printed copy of this you can use if for the numbers. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'll pass this over if I doubt you want to do it. Um, so did we had to calculate what the, what the fund balance is because it moves based on you know receipts and expenses. Um, so we took the what we did is we took the audited. Um, well, I did this based on what Eda provided. Um, so I took the audited certified retained earnings as of June 30th in 2023, and you add the receipts. Um, now this is around the certified is around seven million. The receipts were about 17 million, and then we uh, we, we Reduce the expenses, which are almost 18 million, and the encumbrances, which is about 1.3. We come up with the calculated balance. <laughs> and there's Eda now, because she wants this correct by uh, the number looking at. Oh, yeah. What page of the um, attachment are you on? I'm, I just have this. Oh, okay. Now. I'm going to pass it over to you. Okay. I'll pass it around. I just want to say the fund, but I want to say how we came up with the amount, because it isn't just sitting there. Um, so it sort of adds up. So I have six million two hundred fifty-three and ninety-three dollars. So six two five three zero nine three. We're going to pass that down to Sarah. We're going to take a look at another one. We can pass it on the other side of the room. I can email it out now. I can scan it and email it right now. 
Okay. Um, of course, it's a bit easier, but that's okay. right. Right, so that's fun balance. A um, couple of things, the bonus. Um, I'll do the same thing here with this as well. Um, one thing I had Mike was uh, about was the, um, I get a little recap of water meter, the number of actual water millimeters that we've had last, well, I want the last five years, even last three years. And also someone had asked for a five-year recap of unaccounted water. <laughs> someone. Who we may name it. <laughs> when they asked every year. Uh, and we got it. So I'll pass them around. Um, and the unaccounted water is, uh, well, I'll pass over to Tara. Tara can go ahead and copy it in if that makes sense. That's the easiest thing to do. Unaccounted water is um, basically what the um, MWRA says they provide us with. And then we subtract what we send out to people, the meter distribution. And then we deduct what's known as the uh, CV which is a certified estimate of municipal use. They have all the standards. And so we deduct that, and that's stuff from municipal buildings and stuff that you don't have needed. Uh, and it's an estimate. And after that, you get the amount of uh, unaccounted water and divide that by the, uh, by the amount provided and get the percentage of, of unaccounted water. Um, it's been pretty much around 20%, except for 2021, it was 14 and 15. It went back up in 22. It's hard to say if it's related to water meter replacement or not. Total number of users that we have for FY, um, it's gone up slightly each year. Um, we have a total of 12,783 accounts, but we have 12,702 billable accounts. So 12,700 billable accounts based on. Um, I use that in um, attachment E, by the way, just to give us a little bit of bonus about the, you know, percentage of what our, uh, the average user's dollar goes for. Um, pass this to Tyler, please. I just want to take a quick look at it. I could pass it without. Right here, we're passing out to this guy, too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I sent the thing out on Saturday, uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, um, with pretty much the major changes to the budget. Um, were there any questions on those? I didn't receive any. So it was just with the budget. But, um, so all right, so look, why don't we, um, uh, we can start at the beginning of the budget. Uh, so the biggest things with staff, the, the biggest in, uh, impact was the staff. Uh, or rather the personnel charges. Okay. Madam Chair, can I interrupt at this point of question? Go ahead. So fully a fifth of the water that the MWRA charge of Arlington for is disappear. Um, we cannot account for it. I think that is yes. Uh, tweet at any word from, from anyone in town hall that this could be a problem? Okay. It's a consistent issue. Um, yeah, I knew here. Yeah, I'll be stupid. Yeah. Do, we, do does anybody call this a problem? Yes. No. Well, um, well no, see, see, what we do is what we, we borrow money from the MBTF, the MWRA. I wish we could borrow from the MBTF. We borrow from the MWRA, and what we do is we place water leaks and the sewer in. And what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of unaccounted water by doing. Yes. Yeah. So. And, but we're losing ground on that, by the way. So he'd like to double the amount. That's, I guess, what you know, kind of what we're doing about it. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. I'd have to ask somebody from town hall, but okay. from my view, that must be what we're doing about. That's the question. Okay, we have a couple more questions. Annie and I So I was going to just respond to Michael's question. Is that okay? You no, want me to answer it? I, I think we have, we already answered it. Chris, I, I should have mentioned. Um, Department of Environmental Protection this year gathered all this information statewide, put it on their website. But I have to ask the question anyway because I really like it. <laughs> like, so they're one year behind on their information. 
I should have, I offset it. Yeah, well, that, that's what they say. It doesn't, I mean, every year, that's why every year the answer is we don't have that. Yeah. Because we don't have it yet. Yeah. Um, How's it costing? Is the water unaccounted for or unpaid for? Right. Okay, um, because I don't, yeah. you know, all the water the, that goes in. The former, in, not the latter. We pay for it, right? Yeah. No, in other words, is you've got 20%, you know, unaccounted for. Or is that we know where it goes, it's just not paid because the city, the uh, town of Arlington buildings all get water, especially the schools are the biggest ones, but they don't pay charges. Right. No, those are, um, uh, that's in the CEMU, that's the certified estimated municipal use. So they estimate how much that is. <laughs> okay. So the 20% is on top of all that. Right. Okay. Uh, and so, I mean, the answer is, yeah, we do. I mean, right? I mean, users aren't necessarily, I mean, it's built into the bill. It's a fixed. I mean, this is how much water we use, someone has to pay for it. So, I mean, yes, we do pay for it. Josh? I was just going to say, in terms of what you're just saying, I'm, I'm noticing on this uh, table that our uh, losses were way down during COVID. So maybe that is actually municipal building. Cool. Hmm. I don't know what that, how it's good to have these smart analysts on the, <laughs> on, the, on the committee here. That's a good point, Josh. I think that's a, that's a good tie. That, I mean, I don't think it's replacements of the water meters. Yeah. Go ahead, Grant. Okay. Um, also had the, uh, well, let's, um, let's move ahead uh, through. It, the, um, the, you know, in essence, the, I'm sorry, Alan, there is one new person here, you're correct. Um, and you want to say about the articles about mm -hmm. how we're buying the issue? Okay. Um, one of the things about the water and sewer, I'm sure you've heard before, is that um, it's sort of a mini uh, MWRA. The MWRA gets a whole bunch of water, they distribute it amongst towns, they have to have mains and sewers, et cetera, to take care of it. And we also have to do that users. Um, you know, they're sort of the middleman, you could say, or the wholesaler, but we also try to imitate what we do. I think it's kind of important to notice uh, two things. One is that, you know, they assess us. Um, they do a preliminary assessment, and we put that in the water budget, and the water and sewer budget. Then we have to change the water and sewer budget again. Uh, it's not just for insurance. The MWRA also provides a more adjusted assessment from around the middle of February. Another reason why this is kind of done last or almost. Uh, so it's also important to note that um, about 60, about two thirds of every dollar that we spend goes to the uh, MWRA for the water. Only a third of it is what we spend on our expenses. You can see that on the attachment E, but I think that's kind of important to note that we pay 67 cents of every dollar to the MWRA. You know, which you get good water, but uh, so the um, I love doing this because it's so it starts with water and the budget starts with sewer collection system, and this is immediately an indirect charge. And the water and sewer budget is composed of three things, as I kind of try to point out made of operating expenses, uh, debt service, and then the indirect charges. And we start off with the indirect charges right at first. Um, and we start with sewer collection first. So this is just a placeholder for the uh, uh, charges that the DPW staff that don't work for water and sewer, but they provide the engineering, motor vehicle, um, and the other departments, uh, and the admin provide to the DPW, uh, provide to um, the water and sewer. So this is only half the amount that they provide because the other half is under water. So we'll see that later on in one of the water budgets, you will see the exact same amount. The budget for this year is the, uh, I like this print, uh, it's 645, 394. Um, and so now, you know, if you look down, um, this is one of the reasons it's important, I think, to tie it together and so hard to do it, is if you um, go down to the water budget, I believe it's on page four. 
It's under water sewer properties. It's not titled correctly. It's called salary and wages, but it's the same amount. And those two amounts, uh, we can we'll see a result of the uh, uh, the offset table and the, all the charges that the we, do, we pay the DPW staff divided by two. Um, so back to page one. This is this is actually correctly titled DPW staff and their charges because that's what it is. When we get down to the other ones, it's not so easily typed. Uh, so anyway, so that's kind of fixed into the. Um, and that amount is kind of fixed um, by a chart that we'll see in Appendix uh, D, or Appendix B rather. Uh, and the next section is the indirect uh, uh, charges. And the, I want to point out, and I think I pointed out on the sheet too, all these years we thought this is a placeholder. Workman's comp and unemployment compensation was a placeholder because it always had the same amount in it every year. We budget 6000 and 1500. Well, it turns out in the actuals, the last two years, someone's made a claim. So the actuals look a little different, um, which is interesting. I've never seen the actuals, never seen this before, you know, call it a number of years. Uh, but the budget amount stayed the same. I probably should, I should stay the same. People I make the claims only last for less than a year, and they haven't. This is the first claim in a while. The next three lines. Retirement costs, health benefits, and indirect costs. Those are all part of the indirect costs, and we can see those in the, uh, we'll get to those in the attachments. Uh, how they're programmed. Um, so the next section is actually some operating expenses. And this is where the budget really gets flattened out. I've gotten uh, uh, pretty good at, even, even when the years overlap, or rather the years fluctuate. Um, so this is really flat, the section here for contracted services, materials, supplies, et cetera, it's all flat. Um, and the next session, next section is the MWRA assessment. As I said, that the, this goes up um, and they pro, uh, provide a preliminary assessment and then uh, a more final one comes out in February. As I say, we did a good job on the, the town officials did a good job on the, predicting the assessment and predicting the, um, or getting close to the insurance number as well, by the way, um, not too far off. They didn't have to adjust it by much. The, the two differences in the budgets, I think are only about $300,000 that would revise the budgets. Uh, but so the MWRA assessment went up a little slightly and you have no control over that one. Uh, if we move along to page two. Uh, this is the debt service area. And we're doing the sewer one first. This is where Alan Jones so kindly pointed out that uh, this is where we pay the, um, well, we pay the, the principal and interest for the non MWRA loan. And, and, um, and also we have debt service where we just make the payments for the uh, MWRA loan program. Um, Yes, you'll see that the non uh, the MWA went up more than the, the non because it makes more sense. We do the interest free loans than the than the interest loans. Um, the next section is the sewer rehab for hundred thousand dollars. This is the hundred thousand dollars that we kick in uh, along with the nine hundred thousand that we're asking the town for for the sewer benefits. Um, the next section, which is the sewer collection system. The primary reason for this budget is always kind of funny, uh, but this is for storm sewers. And again, a very flat budget. No change in the budget amounts. And they do kind of look a little bit like the actuals. Uh, and that section, aren't they like twice the actuals? Like 476 yeah. versus 195. Uh, sorry, Josh. I didn't hear. Oh, in that section uh, on the bottom of page three, are, aren't the, isn't the budget or budget bottom of page two? Isn't the budget twice the actual? Yeah, or a little more than that. Quarter. Where, where, well, I'm just looking at like the, the, the on the bottom of page two, the 195 for the last actuals, and then 476 is a flat budget, but 
Right, right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, I know some some of the stuff is uh, part of the thing from one year to the next, and the others just seem to be. Um, well, we only have two years to compare it with. Mm -hmm. I guess it's, it's kind of it's pretty much what the answer is. You know, and there are three techniques in budgeting. I've known, right. especially this year, right? There's the one that we saw some of the some other enterprise fund where they had really fine tuned the budget to act close to mirror to what they spend. Then there's some others that. That, you know, they have to fluctuate because of, you know, we get paid the fiscal versus the annual. Then there's some that just don't, don't seem to seem to make sense offhand, but we don't have enough of the actuals. Hey, when I was, you know, doing budgets in the private area, if I gave my practice manager a budget that it was this flat, they would just send it right back to me. Then can you put in some more numbers? So um, I can appreciate that this is one of the techniques they're allowed to use. But I don't really have a good answer for it. And it must be from some other years. Thank you. Uh, so on to page three, we actually have um, some real payroll operating expenses, personal operating expenses. Uh, this is for the water distribution services. And these are all the salary and wages. Now, these were not... This is the one I know I put in their business that it went up about 9%, almost 10%. And uh, the basis of this is pretty much a union settlement. Um, plus, they hired a new person, a new senior engineer. The next section is the indirect section. And this is, matches the, uh, the sewer portion of the indirect expenses. Uh, this is uh, where the workman's comp again looks like a placeholder who budgets thousand a year and never spend it. Um, not sure why the claim was done on the sewer side and not the water side. I don't think it, it didn't really occur to me that it made, it made a difference in the scope of the budget. Uh, and this is the other half of the retirement cost, the other half of the health benefits, and the other half of the indirect costs. Um, Michael, pretty much, I don't know if you're familiar, pretty much since it's water and sewer, what you have to do with the indirect expenses, you have to divide them all by two. So all of these also match the equal and opposite sewer. Probably already do that. Now, please hold off questions. Like the, no, I'm sorry, Charlie. You're on this. She recognizes you, sure. So no, I'm looking at the, uh, the increases in the uh, contracted services training and materials and supplies that Josh uh, just mentioned, and the actuals again are lower than in the forecast. But I think um, you know what we saw in uh, as we went in from from 2022 going into 2024. Remember, these are fiscal years. There was a tremendous increase in inflation, and that might not be reflected in the earlier um, actuals. And I'm wondering, you also saw some pretty significant storms. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if that has impacted the budget as well. I could inquire about that. Um, by the budget amounts. I don't know that the budget, well, I could inquire about that, but we're also, kind of looks like the budget's so always been 400,000. It's expenses kicked up. 2023, but don't know if they've ever ever gotten to the budget amount. Hmm. I'm not sure that the amount has changed. I'd have to look at previous budget books. But... Uh, so, uh, so that's the indirect charges section, and uh, then we move on to the water, the contracted services, etc., for the water distribution area rather than sewer area. And, uh, well, these look a little bit more in line, I'd have to say, <laughs> for contracted services, trainings, materials, and supply. No, I'm not certain how they divvy up, you know, whether the contracted services are just for water or just for sewer. They would look like they're, um, you know, budgetary, they're budgeted for each, but I don't know how, when they bill them, how they, it might be the same company that provides it. 
I don't know how they split it up. If anyone is interested in further detail, feel free to email me about that as well. Um, so on page four, we have the MWRA assessment for water. I know that increased the same amount, same percentage rather. And that's an operating expense. That's the that's the big cost of goods sold. Um, Next is the uh, water sewer properties. This is the salary and wages. They should be titled DPW indirect charges. It would be nice if it said that, but it doesn't. But that is what it is at these uh, 645, 545, 394. And then um, the next line is this is the $100,000 for the water mains that we put in. Debt service line comes next. This is the uh, debt service for the uh, non-interest bearing and notes that we don't see any P&I, don't see any principal and interest for the water uh, debt service. That's because we're borrowing a lot more from the uh, interest-free program. Or one of the reasons why we're borrowing. Uh, then we have uh, operating expenses uh, for both water and sewer properties, uh, electricity, natural gas, and our favorite, the Great Meadows expenses. Because it's such a large item in the budget, I thought I'd take the time um, <laughs> to talk about the actuals. Um, I did notice because of the question before that the actuals have uh, kind of state, they had looked like they would increase there. $2,000 to maybe $3,000 a year, but they peaked a couple of years ago. And now they're constant at 2,048. And I tried to anticipate a question that somebody might ask as to why. So I asked. And it seems that there used to be two parcels that we paid for, paid money toward. And now we're only paying for one parcel. So Mike thinks maybe they combine the parcels together or something like that. That's the mystery of the Great Meadows experience. Um, okay, so now the next, this is where the, um, so, you know, when they give this to me, um, which was great, and I wanted to, by the way, thank you, Car Carolyn, for asking, inviting me to the meeting, because um, I got this budget right then and there, um, as opposed to getting it the next day at like 10 o'clock, which would be this morning. Uh, but I had to put the page numbers in and that sort of stuff, so it looks kind of, you know, messy, et cetera, and it doesn't print the same way. Um, so we have page five that just has the debt service for water uh, on it. This is the one for principal and interest. Notice how this has gone down 19% because we're borrowing more uh, interest-free loans. Moving along this pretty flat budget, page six, which has the, this is the hydrant replacement and the small equipment section. Uh, capital, capital equipment as well. And the one thing we want to point out here is that apparently it looks like they retired a truck, uh, no longer on the budget. Now we get to the good part. Uh, this is the, uh, on page seven is the, uh, the summary page. Now, if anyone, um, especially those with their handouts, um, you want to take a look at attachment E. Um, but what I, what I wind up doing with this is I, um, the attachments are basically uh, an arithmetic exercise to check the offsets, to make sure that they match, and to make sure that the numbers are all accounted for in this um, water distribution um, system summary. So what I did on Schedule E, uh, I'm sorry, um, Attachment D, is I put the, uh, I broke down for each of these line items, I broke down which expenses in the budget make up this. And I also threw in a per user number too in the spreadsheet so, so we can see how much this sort of cost. 
Um, but I didn't want to jump ahead too much, but that's how these, uh, that's how the attachments tie into this. Um, so, um, actually, if we could, it might be nice if we could jump to the attachment, uh, E, just so I could, uh, someone had a question earlier in the session about this, uh, how hard it is to scroll to attachment E. Uh, it's hard to look at them both at the same time, but. So if we're looking at attachment D, e, if we're looking at up at the type up at the top, uh, this is called the water sewer budget summary breakdown for FY um, 24, I should say 25. Um, the personnel ser service summary includes both the indirect and the personnel charges. And I think. Someone asked me, it might have been Charlie asked me about what the total was and what it included. And this might have been the, uh, a while back. This might have been what it was. But if we also want to take a look at the far right of this attachment, you know, it's a per dollar users based on 12,702 users. Gives the idea that per year, every paid user pays 51, well, pays $102 toward the indirect charges and pays 100 uh, 23 to the water, uh, to, to actual personnel. If you look down the bottom of the page, it looks like at the very bottom right hand corner, it looks like each user, average user pays almost $2,000 a year. I'm not sure. A user, being really a, household, yeah. a user being a household. Billable account. Yeah. Not a household, like a two, like a, if you have two family house, that's one meter. Right, but it's not per person. Right. Correct, right, per user, sorry, right, per billable account. Wouldn't fit in the, sorry, it wouldn't fit in the column. Or anything, okay. But very accurate. For, um, so the subtotals is up, and again, um, this is where you can also see that the health insurance number, they're, they're half of each, and, and um, when you put the two together, they match with some of the other attachments. <clears throat> Um, if we go back to page seven, which is the uh, summary page, we have a sub. We actually have the revenues, and we also have the uh, expenses. And we need to vote on both. So at this point, I could go through the attachments and see how these indirects are put together. If uh, one would like, or um, you could entertain any questions as well. Why don't you make a motion as to okay. what to approve, but what you uh, okay. want us to um, approve, and then I'll open it up for questions. Very good. All right, so I move that the uh, committee uh, approve $24,637,529 um, for the water and sewer budget expenses. Second. And run to revenue at the same time. And I want to make a motion to approve the same amount, twenty-four million six hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred and twenty-nine um, for total revenues. So I mean second. Okay. All right, questions. Uh Dean John. Oh, we need a replacement power. Oh, uh, and the deployment system. Allow me to read from the script. Got some good detailed answers on that. Um, let me get the exact number here. Um, if I may, let me do it this way. I asked them in this order. Water meter replacement. Old meter still using informants until the last what remaining water meter is replaced. Mike says the meters are Neptune, and the old reading system was ITRON, not Informix, but it must run on the Informix platform. Um, the new technology will not work with older meters. Um, how many meters are still using the Informix? This is an evolving number. As the last report a couple of months ago, we still had almost 
is 894 meters to replace. Um, he doesn't say this, but based on the previous, this is kind of behind plan, based on stuff that we said last year. Uh, he says the problems in these remaining accounts are the, the, the most difficult to gain access to. We were on our fifth or sixth notice for these properties requesting to replace the meter. Including me. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you guys was replaced after six notices. We get the, <laughs> so, so, I've at least. so, 893 meters <laughs> still is in place, perhaps. What took you, Dean? I'll say I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> but I make a comment on that, though. Just so I told Grant this. So, like, I noticed my water meter broke because I got an estimated bill and I went over. And I wanted to understand the town's ability to compel a resident to, to do it. So I just blatantly refused to replace it for two years. And I realized they can send you harassing letter after harassing letter, but they can't do much more. And they would call, they would beg. I think someone actually knocked on my door one day and was like, please let us replace the meter. And I was like, no. And then and then when I finally realized that um they, well, they couldn't do anything. I then got it replaced, right? But what was really fascinating about it is because along the way, you started to hear about residents who complained that these spikes in their bills. So I noticed the estimated bill was clearly going to be lower than the usage because like when I started on strike, I had kids who didn't shower every day, and now I suddenly have kids who shower every day. So I knew the boom was coming, and I was preparing for it, right? So lo and behold, the giant bill showed up, right? The $1,000, $1,100. Taxable, and everybody gets mad because they put it all in that far bucket, Ooh, the tiered system, and all that. But I'm like, all right, well, I deserve to pay it, right? Because I played this game for two years. So, you know, win stupid games, get stupid, win, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. <clears throat> um, but I thought it was insightful because it does kind of articulate the struggle that the DPW director has, which is he can't force anybody to change that meter and couldn't compel me to do it, couldn't, and so he can't compel the other. 894 people to do it. So it's, it's so going to turn into an issue. Informing system is, is here for, for a while. Yeah. But, uh, uh, well, no, there's, there's another reason too, and that the old meters don't work as well. They, it's just, just, I mean, it's a moving part and they don't work as well, they don't measure, so people get more water for less price. Mm -hmm. So it's another reason not to not to replace it. A lot of kind of poor water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're turning the water is there. Do you have any more questions, Dean? Nope. Josh? Uh, if they were to double the um, one mile to two miles, would, where would that How much money would that be? Where's that reflected in the budget? Um, that's a great question, Josh. Uh, it's not, it wouldn't just be, it wouldn't just, if he was to double it, uh, let's say the water, it would be. Um, Instead of 1.6, because they put in 100,000 of their own, right? So they put in 1.5 plus 100 of their own. So they probably asked for three and then put in 200,000 of their own. He's not asking for that, by the way, obvious reasons why he wouldn't even ask for that, but that's that's the math. Does that answer it? Yeah, I, I guess yeah, I don't know. That would be why for water, it would be three million. It's it such a small 10, number. A ten percent increase in the, in the water rate. Pardon me. It would be a ten percent increase in the water rate. Twenty-five million dollars, uh, right? <laughs> We're spending two and a half million. So if you double it, it's ten percent increase in the water rate. No, I guess I'm confused. I thought you said that it would go from a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars that we would be out of it. <laughs> but we're getting we're borrowing money from um, from uh, MWRA. MWRA. Yeah, and that's. Uh, 1.5 million and 900,000, so that's 2.4 million. So if we double the repair rate, it's called 2.5, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to add another 2.5 million to the budget. No, we have to add more debt service to the budget. Yeah, yeah. but it's a constant number. They borrow it every year. Yes, but, but they're not paying that out in cash. They're paying debt service on it. But, Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're right, but if you, if you have this money that you're borrowing yep. every year, it's the same amount. If it, the debt service stays the same every year. I mean, the, the 2.5 million here is, is in, in the budget. Money coming in and money going out. 
even though we're borrowing it? I'm sorry, what you're saying is you doubled the debt service. No, if you go back to, uh, is it all right if I answer the question? Yes, but just limit to what this budget is. Yeah. Yep. So if you go back to the, um, the 50, 5760 water debt service, MWRA loan, yes. it's a it's million dollars a year. And you're saying that if we doubled our borrowing, we would double the debt? Yeah, if we double the work, right? Oh. Then we have, have to put a, that much more money into the budget. If, you, if you're borrowing a certain amount of money every year to fund the work, right. then um, it's, 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 it's an expense. I think it's not like a building a building where you borrow 30 million and then you pay it off, right? It's like a, every year spending that same amount. And that's why. Mm -hmm. But then I don't know why we're calling it debt service. What do we get for it? Mm -hmm. All right, what? Josh, do you have any more questions? <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> what was it? it? Ah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, Charlie? So uh, I probably should have sent this ahead of time, uh, but it only occurred to me at last week's meeting. <clears throat> so there was a discussion about the town engineer putting in these clever infiltration trenches. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was also a discussion, um, I think it was the water bodies committee, uh, about the CSO problem. Oh, it was also in the, in the email from this fellow's stock. Uh, where, where is the expense that the town incurs because of the CSOs? Do we know where that shows up and how much it is? I think you asked someone like that last year or something that what which what kind of expense? I don't know what the expense is. That's from. Uh, they must be doing something. Last year, asked with uh, uh, considering something for legal expense or something like that. Uh, but I believe last year he raised one of the budgets on storm sewer uh, a bit to accommodate that. And it actually might be, is that the 400000 one? He did raise the, the storm sewers uh, by, I think, 100000 200000 to accommodate for that. That might actually be the... That the we have in the council? That one? That's the CFO. Mm -hmm. CSOs are not on our side of us. They're not ours. Right. Well, we do have three hundred four thousand. Those nasty CSOs, but we still have um, uh, sewers, storm sewers that we're replacing right. along this day as well. Um, other questions? All right, we have a motion for two, four, six, three, seven, five, two, nine for expenses and revenue. It's been seconded. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Unanimous. Thank you, Grant. That is a lot of work that you do. All right, uh, Carolyn, you're up. Sorry, you don't have any in the Um, I don't think I've received anything, no. If you emailed me, I can yeah. put it up and we, send it out. the HRC instead, and then I'll come back to this. Sorry, I'm working on it. What's that? Can we jump to HRC and then come to the other items and then come back to this? No, I'd like to do this. Get this out of the way. Need a few minutes, Carol? Yeah. All right. So, all right, we'll come back to insurance in a few minutes. Um, there are a couple of warrant articles that I'd like to knock off, but pretty simple. All right. Um, <clears throat> article 21, we discussed a few weeks ago with Dana Mann. This involves the senior uh, citizen property tax exemption. Um, he has informed me that they are withdrawing that article. Um, so I propose that I'd like a, a, a motion to do no action on Article 21. So moved. 
Um, While we're doing this, I just told all this to Rebecca last week, but our um, distribution work, our distribution list is still only working for town email addresses. So um, just to know that. Here, 
Something from somebody, Carmen, taking so long to load, I can't seem to get the. <laughs> okay, you want to start, Carolyn? Okay, so um, can we pull up just the first page, uh, or is everyone looking at the first page? The letter or the budget? Not the memo, the budget. Okay. Yep, yeah, one second. Yep. So we're looking at one of the managers. It's the one that the you sent the handout. We just looked. They did a good job on your estimate. Yeah. Turns out that they. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, take it, Karen. All right. So group health insurance went up significantly this year from the GIC. Well, we were anticipating that it tends to go in cycles, like for three year cycles, and this is a year. And also with um, inflation, we think that the insurance companies are simply doing that to um, help offset the costs of insurance um, of inflation from the past year. So um, normally, there's not that big of a change. Um, the employment mitigation went up significantly. And that's because they haven't funded it um, as much in the last couple of years. And what employee mitigation is, is for those who end up with exorbitant medical costs. When we switch to the GIC, we agree to not um, have people's um, medical expenses um, significantly impact their ability to pay other bills. And so that's what that change is. Um, we've that has been in place for 13 years now. And we had a conversation about, well, wasn't this just a transitionary process? Nope. And um, the HR person's view, director's view was the same as um, Ann is head nodding just now, which was that um, particularly for those making lower amounts of funding, um, we should not have um, staff or employees who are ending up destitute because of health insurance bills. And my response was, well, should we only allow that for people making under a certain amount? And at the moment, the answer is no. I mean, in this country, an entitlement is an entitlement, even if you're a multi-billionaire. So, um, so we're going to leave it at that for now. Um, the um, insurance official liability, someone might want to correct me on that, but is that around? Liability for management um, and decision making. Yeah, or? directors and officers. Directors and officers. The right. okay. insurance is the cover yeah. fraud. Right, right. Um, property insurance went up a teeny bit. Um, and these insurances, the liabilities come from um, uh, yeah. what was the name of the company? There's a there's a, us, a, a local Maya. Maya, that's Nash right. Local insurance. Um, and um, their rates are great compared to others. And every once in a while, every other year, the HR department would set other comparables to see how the rates are, and they are still doing well. Um, and that's it for the top line. The offsets are again water offsets, but we can go through these pages a little bit. The next page is how offsets are calculated. Um, so you can see that. Um, these are the health insurance offsets. And then the next page is pretty crazy, but if you go up to like 160% increase, you can actually start reading it. The last column means nothing. So if you're looking at that last column to the right, um, and thinking none of those numbers add up. It's because of something bizarre in the way that system works. She's never looked at it um, and she doesn't worry about it because it doesn't seem to be related to anything and she gets all of the numbers she needs in a different way. Um, but some of the things to look at, if you look at the very, 
top line, we will see December 23. It's smack in the middle, and it's number 22, which is just to the right of that. Um, these are the closest numbers we can get, and the way they anticipate next year's numbers is they take the, the actually they take March's numbers, um, and then they switch them with the FY25 numbers that just came in from the GIC a couple of weeks, a week and a half ago, and they apply them, and that's the, the rates they come up with. We have a question on the floor. Um, we have a couple of questions. Keep going. Okay. Um, and um, so, so that's how they calculate what the rates will be for this year, um, for the coming year. Um, so the numbers that they're using are these December numbers. They're March numbers based on what families and individual employees have chosen for their health insurance and then apply these numbers that come into your GIS. Um, if you look at the very not the very bottom, the first break, you'll see active plans. And that number really hasn't changed much. It's 1107 this is most recently and 1113, and they don't usually see those change much. Uh, if you look a little bit lower at the next break, you'll see Medicare supplements. And again, 893 versus 888. And then look at um, opt-out families and individuals, and I can explain that for those who don't know what it is. Those numbers are also fairly consistent. Um, we go to the next page. It's a group health projections for not just health insurance, but um, group life, flexible spending, and the Medicare withhold. And we love people to be on Medicare because it costs lots, a lot less. And we have to pay the Medicare penalties for anyone who doesn't jump into it soon enough. And that is because we want them on it. Um, so, and the state wants them on it. Um, the next page is simply full health care insurance rates for the plans that we're using within the GIC right now and what, what employees are charged. And, next, and if you look, Medicare rates are significantly lower. Um, we cover mostly 80-15, the majority of people in town. No, I'm sorry. 75.5. 75-25, um, then, then there are some that are 80-20, and there's a tiny amount that are 85-15, -15, and those are um, longer standing employees, and so we'll see that disappear over time. A number of other towns do 80-20 for the majority of their employees, but we're sticking with 75-25 for now for the majority of employees. Um, the one with the purple line on the top is the Medicare. And again, look, you know, the, the numbers are so drastic, you can miss that. Um, another Medicare page. Um, then there's a non-Medicare page. Uh, there's the contributions, and that gives you the breakdown, sorry, that we, I just mentioned without even getting to this page. Uh, these are the um, breakdowns by um, amounts of money. That's page 10, page 11. Or the same. Or the same. Thirteen was a printout from Eunice. 
Go back to the top page. We'll start. I'll start taking questions. Well, tell me the order, Christine. Um, so, do you have a motion, Carol? I move that we accept the uh, budget as is presented on page one. With a uh, group health insurance appropriation of 1547212. A, um, yeah, so the, the group health taxation total is 1263121. Well, that's the change. That's the change. What is it? $22,761,873. Second. All right. Um, questions, Annie, and then Rebecca. Um. Oh, I was just gonna do ten seconds of um, history um, on the the fund to not pay the copays for the uh, employees. He started that fund when we moved to the GIC. You have to remember that when we moved to the GIC, we got a three million dollar reset of our health insurance budget, and that the employees really did not want to give up. Uh, some of their bargaining rights in order to move to the GIC, but the government had, the state government provided us with a law that allowed us to move them because it was going to save us money. So I think that, that continuing to support their co pays is a small price to pay for that huge reset that made a huge difference to where we are at in terms of increasing taxes at this point. So, end of soapbox speech. Uh, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. With John, I figured it out. Thank you. Um, John. Is there a breakdown of um, health insurance costs related to current employees and retirees? No. That includes everyone. Yeah, yeah the 20 million is, is everybody. I was just wondering if the, is it like 25, 75, or 50, 50? I didn't ask for the particular I was just curious because that's that's essentially what the OPEP is put aside for, right? You know, if, if that ever gets no, no, out of control. O OPEP is. Other, oh, wait, yes, it is. It would be in the report, the OPEP report, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, OPEP never never actually funds, it's kind of like in case of emergency break, right? That's what OPEP is. Charlie, uh, you, you can actually figure that out yourself, John. <clears throat> There's a chart in the front of the manager's book about yeah. who the active employees are, yeah. Okay, number of active employees, and on the second page, uh, it, it points out that the total number of um, of enrollees here, family or single active plans is 1107. So we subtract the hinted the 600 employees and current employees. Yeah. Uh, but this also includes a school employees. Right? 400. Yes. yes. It's every, yes. It's so it sounds like the well, actually, maybe, maybe you know, yeah. this There's includes about a town of schools. Yeah. About a thousand school employees. Well, okay. you could wait, 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 wait. Alan Jones, go ahead. Okay, this is unfortunately going to be a tricky last minute question. It's about the uh, email we got from Alex last night, um, in which he says, We are proposing that the remaining $127,655 in the health claims trust fund be used as a funding source in FY25 as a direct offset to higher than anticipated health insurance costs. So it means draining the, uh, you know, take, taking the health insurance, the, the, the rest of the health insurance trust fund and ducting it, using it as a direct offset insurance cost. Now, that, that, that's one question whether I think it's a good idea. That's, that's a proposal. Um, the other one is where do we put that? Uh, it can one? either be as a general fund revenue and just against it, or we can add it to the offsets in this budget, which would take the increase down to, I believe, 6.3% instead of 6.92. So, first of all, Carol, what are the offsets in this budget? Do you have a breakdown? I thought it was on the next page. Yeah, it's on the next page. Yeah, so. the, the offsets yeah, are from the enterprise fund. Okay, so 
I don't see anything from the health care. It, it's not in this. I said I got this at 10 o'clock last night. No, I think it, no. it, it's, it's not included in the 1,148,521. It's not in there. So then do we need it? So, so we so could. What, what Alan's talking about is last year, you may remember how meeting appropriated one point four million dollars out of the health claims yeah. trust fund, um, leaving about one hundred twenty-seven thousand left in the health claim trust fund for any residual claims. Last yesterday um, and last night, uh, the town manager and the deputy were talking about depleting that fund and using the remainder 127 to help offset the insurance budget. I want to know, do we need that offset? Number two, the problem I foresee is you have, as I understand, we have to vote that money out of the trust fund to be able to put it somewhere. And there's no warrant article to do that. So I, I, I think that may be problematic. Um, and then we have your, so how do we put it? Right. If we put in this offset, it drop from 6.9 to 6.3, which might look good, or just throw it in general funds. But was there, a, was there an article last year? To last year was an article. Okay. So you're right. You really, well, we can't do that. Right. So that, that's a problem. Charlie, we have to hang up. Next year. I'm sorry. This is the issue of taking the money out of the trust? Yeah. Because <clears throat> we did that every year in the OPEB fund. Right. The health. Planes. The, yeah, the that's trust right. fund, right? Yeah. That's what you're well, talking about. Implicit in the OPEB fund, I guess. So we put it in the OPEB fund. So I would think here you could issue a line item in the budget, and the and the uh, the the trust funds are hereby transferred. Then why did we need a warrant article last year to, to move, move? Why did we need a warrant article last year to move 1.4 out of that? Possible we didn't need it, but we did it for transparency's sake. You did it in the OPEB funds. I mean, in the OPEB fund, it just says appropriates into set fund the sum of X dollars to be transferred to the remaining balance in the health benefit trust fund. So I don't see why we couldn't just add that in that line into the budget. And And so then we get to your question. Yeah, then it was added to revenue to sort of put it in here, which would drop a percentage. Oh, right. Right. Charlie, then Topher, then Dean. So I think I think the first the reason they brought this up is that um, they're looking for money because of the shift in the in the um, governor's budget. And so uh, if we weren't going to do this. Then this would deplete the the uh, it would cause an increase in the transfer from the override stabilization fund. So it's got to come either from that or from someplace else. The thing uh, we had a, we had a lengthy discussion about this at the health insurance uh, meeting. And uh, one concern was that uh, this is supposed to cover uh, claims that arose from precondition pre-existing conditions prior to the. Transferred to the GIC in 2012, that was a dozen years ago. And um, if my memory serves me right, uh, Karen Malloy said there was only one claim that came out of that period, and that was five or six years ago, and there have been no more since then. Um, so if there were future claims, that would have to be dealt with somehow, uh, probably from you know fund transfer or special warrant or depending upon the nature. Reserve fund transfer, or depending on the nature of the expense. Um, the other concern was that um, at one time we had a health insurance trust fund uh, committee, I think it was called, that negotiated with the town every year how much money to take out of the trust fund, how much to appropriate into it, how big the fund should be, and, and how how we would pay the expenses. And there were a number of um, union representatives on that. I remember Ken Hughes uh, was on it from the, uh, he, he was the, uh, uh, 
the employee representative on the contributory retirement board, and there are a couple of other people. So it was a very formal process. Uh, according to the town manager, the deputy town manager, and Karen Malloy, uh, they have reviewed this $127,000 transfer with uh, somebody remind me. Town council? No, with the. Uh, We'll, um, I'm having a double a double bind here. Who, who preceded you in the capital budget role? Oh, John Wall. Pardon? John Wall. Yeah, John Wall. John Wall's wife, whose name I can't remember. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Who was the, she's the uh, is now or was the head of the uh, teachers union? Yes, she was. She's retired. Uh, when this process took place, she's okay with this change. So they feel that they. Communicated to the union representatives, and there's no uh, disputes. So far, then, do you? Yeah. Yes, I thought it covered a lot of what we talked about. Uh, I think one question was whether this would go to the district group health. Right. I wasn't sure. Maybe I misunderstood that. But I think another thing was that this was you know, taking last year when we did this shift, it was saying we were taking it from you know long, long term investment and putting it into the OPAP, which is different side of it. So it's like we're taking it, you know, from from one but you know, two similar things. It was going from one long term to another. And this is taking it from a much smaller number, but you're just you're putting it into you know and an operating. Zero and operating. operating. So the DOR has told us to stop netting things. Stop that stop, stop netting things. So that's why we have to vote the peg capital access budget because we used to just net it. We'd get the money in, we'd send it out, and we'd net it to zero. And they told us to stop doing that. That's why I told every time to stop doing it. And so if we net it, then we're we're not following the instructions we were given, which is to stop net accounting. Mm -hmm. the, the only question I have is the fact that this money was left for those with pre-existing conditions prior to um, switching to the GIC. Um, at the time, they had told us it would take about seven years for that process to finish. Mm -hmm. It's been 13 years, and we haven't had any, any um, requests in the last four years. So their, their indication that it would take about seven years appears to have been accurate because we haven't had any um, requests in the last four. So, so we don't you know, really anticipate much more based on not just our own thought process, but... Question, is that the balance left? Yes. So be zero. Yeah. yeah. I hate having little pieces of money just right. sitting around. <clears throat> Why is it using? Other questions on the insurance budget? All right. Um, we should have a vote that um, deals with how we want to handle the 127. Oh. Any any so, suggestions on to transfer the money? To approve the insurance budget at two two seven six one eight seven three, and using as part of the offset. With one twenty-seven. Yeah. So, so would it be one motion to approve the group health insurance budget at a lower number and move the remaining or the remainder in the health claims trust fund to the general fund to be applied as an offset to, or would it just be to move it to offset the health? I think you just said, what's the amount? 120, 127. Okay, so 127,000 and change to be transferred from the remaining balance in the health benefit trust fund. That's the exact language we've used for OPEC. Okay. As a transfer to where? Well, we have it as a line item. Um, it would be used as an offset. To be, yeah, <laughs> to offset. Could you add it to the 114522 or call it out as a separate line? Okay. So to offset the group health insurance costs. 
of the insurance budget. Of the insurance budget. So I make that motion. Second. Can you repeat the motion? I am moving to to move the remaining balance in the um, uh, health insurance plan is health benefit trust fund. Health benefit trust fund of one hundred twenty-seven thousand. Now, what's the rest of it? So one two seven six five five point nine three. Um, to the to. Not moving into the general fund? So yes. 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 Group uh, health insurance. The one, one one forty five two two. Right. If you look at the FinCom report, you'll see it's broken down. It's like it's expanded in the, the enterprise line, just so people can see where the, the options come from. Yeah. So I can it would just be an additional line. Okay, so you just add that trust fund to the enterprise fund, the fund line. from yeah. which. Okay. In the right, sure. and then that would change the numbers. And maybe a foot from the group health insurance. So it would increase the offset number. Yeah, it would decrease the. And so what is two two seven six one eight seven three minus one two seven six nine nine? That's a good question. Uh, I have two six five five plus six nine nine. It could put right after <clears throat> under municipal building trust fund. It's this. The offset is what one two seven six nine nine. Alan. Uh, one two seven six five five one nine three five five. So what is two two seven six one eight seven three nine? Oh, oh, that yes, yeah. So it's it's the increase the one one four eight to one one four eight. Alan, just be, if I remember correctly, the the interest stays in that fund. The health care trust fund. Six five five. We should check with the with the town accountants and make sure because otherwise, you know, you end up with three cents yeah. left in the account. So if if uh, get an updated number from her, if it, if interest accumulates there. Number so one two seven six five five added to the offset of twenty six twenty five. Right. So. Do this on a calculator. So I, to work with. I get like 22634. Is that what you're heading for? Yeah, that's what I have. Is that what? 226342170. Yeah. Okay, but you need to change this number too. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to add up. Okay. The program right after school lunch program. Mm -hmm. Well, well, you know, we only vote whole numbers, so it pays over your stuff. So we should call it one, two, seven, six, five, six. We don't vote that. All right, I'm using one, two, seven, six, five, five plus twenty six, two, five. I get one, four, eight, two, eight, zero, and not set. Does anyone agree with that or not? I'm not sure that's the right number. I can't believe we don't have a calculator. I'm, I've got a calculator. I just keep mistyping. I come up with one two seven six one seven seven. Point out, yeah, I did get that too. Yeah, okay. You call it one seven eight, I guess. What do you have? Go ahead, Tara. Um, what's one, the offset? Sorry, the new it's offset would be one million two hundred seventy six dollars. Uh, or sorry, one million two hundred seventy six thousand one hundred and seventy seven or seventy eight. And then yeah. the final would be twenty two million six hundred thirty four dollars and or sorry, twenty two million six hundred thirty four thousand two hundred and seventeen dollars if we round down. And if I could 
add to that that the finance committee authorizes the chair and vice chair to put it into the finance committee report as they deem appropriate. All right. So there's, a, accepted. So there's a motion seconded. Um, everyone follow what we're doing now. Yep. All right. Um, Charlie. So are you are you suggesting that you're moving the money from the trust fund in the insurance article itself, or are you going to move it from the OPEC article? No, I think the article itself. Yeah, we don't have to. Well, the OPEC the OPEC article. Pretty general. It says it can move money from any funds to support uh, other post employment benefits and expenses. And and with all the retirees that are in the health insurance program, we're supporting other post employment benefits. Okay, just like a little bit. It's just restricted to that. And it has to be. This seems like cleaner to me. I don't know. People agree. Right. Already did the math. Uh, but I, I'm, I know you did the math, but the, the question I'm asking is somewhat of a legal question. And that is can you, in the article, move money from the trust fund in the, in the, in the uh, budget article? The budget article is pretty broad. See if the town will vote to make appropriations to defray town obligations, liabilities, outlay expenses, especially for related to any board's department's purposes, matters here under mentioned, and to provide disposal of motor vehicle and other personal property belonging to the town, determine how the money shall be raised or expended, and take any action related thereto. It may require a two thirds vote, I'm not sure. It's the trust fund. Two thirds vote of the Town meeting, town meeting to move money from a tr trust fund into something else. Did, did well, they we've, have article We've never done it with the OPEP article. Never been a two thirds vote. It's never been a two thirds vote. Well, it's I don't think so. I think it's always been a majority vote, but it was always unanimous, so yeah, nobody so ever took it. <laughs> but I, I, I don't remember ever having to. Uh, I I don't think we've ever had to take more than a majority vote. We've appropriated money. It's just appropriating and transferring. It's not a stabilization fund. All right, that's what we'll do. Um with the plan. Uh, any other questions? Dean. So I think we should, um, I guess we can do this. I would suggest that we show this to the comptroller um, because while I think we can all sit here, right? So think about this structurally. Part of the way we're basing this offset theory is we're saying that, you know, the entry, if we're saying we'll give an offset line, right? Mm -hmm. But everything in the offset line our enterprise funds, which are per, which are rolled up into the proprietary fund group, we transfer it over to the government fund group, which the general fund is housing on. Trust fund you're talking about is in the fiduciary fund group, not in the same group as an enterprise fund. And so we may not, we, the comptroller may look at this and be like, nah, you got a problem. You just lowered your budget without a mechanism to actually put the money into it. So I would just like to suggest, based on that, that at least after we vote, if we just shoot it over to her and be like, hey, is this going to actually work when it goes into the budget? And if it doesn't, we'll just fix it. All right. I, I agree. And Alan, can you yeah. remember when we deal with Alex McGee to make sure that we check that? Um, mm -hmm. Just remind me and kind of run it by. Okay. Yeah, so I asked him the by. question today, but I hadn't heard from back from him. So. All right, uh, any other questions? All right, all in favor of moving the insurance budget as we discussed, say aye. 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 Is this the group health taxation? Group health taxation. Yes. Okay.
Um, any opposed? All right, unanimous. All right. I think that does it with the we, department we, of budgets. We need to vote the liability. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll vote the liability. Okay. Okay. So I move the liability insurance taxation total of six hundred and seven seven thirteen. Second. Any questions? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Oh, did you want to abstain? Yeah. Did you I want to say on this one? All right, all in favor of the previous vote, raise your hand. Fifteen. Any any affirmative? Any opposed? I have to. I have. I'm sorry. I can't hear. Any opposed? But I have to abstain on anything on the insurance. Right. So Abstentions on the first that first motion. One. So fifteen zero. One. Um, all in favor of the second motion regarding the liabilities, raise your hand. Fifteen in the affirmative. Any opposed? Same. One abstention. Fifteen zero one. Sorry, did we vote on the motion to transfer? It yes. Part of the group oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I think that does it with all of the departmental budgets. All right. Now let's deal with the remaining the remainder of the warrant articles. And as I recall, we were in the midst of our um, discussing. Article 50 of Community Preservation Act. I'm sorry, 50? 50? 50, yeah. CPA. We had a motion on the table, right? Um, no, 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 no. All right, so I, my notes said that Annie and Charlie had questions or wanted to say something on the uh, CPA. Okay. Yeah, me too. I <laughs> think I was responding to something going on in the room at the time. Okay. I don't remember what it was. So this is the Community Preservation Fund. Um, we are being asked to endorse it. And article? Article 50. Article 50. So 50. 50. All right. Any further discussion on um, CPA plan? Um, which has a total expenditure uh, of 21790. All right. Uh, all in favor, raise your hand. Oh, this is the CPA. 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 Okay, I thought we had done that. Right? No, no, no. All, right. all in favor of the CPA, raise your hand. Eleven in the affirmative. Uh, opposed? One. Uh, abstentions? Three. Does that Dean Allen Jones? No, no, Dean Michael. No, Michael. Michael. Allen. Okay. One has to abstain this year because we're not getting anybody. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, let's do article 55 next, and this is the library. So, um, to recapitulate, um, the library wants um, $150,000 to use as a grant. Match, 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 match grant. The town manager had proposed um, was going to propose ask for an appropriation of fifty thousand connect, connected with the master plan. He withdrew that. 
to free up 50,000 to go towards the 150 that the library was looking for. We heard last week, last Monday, that the 250th committee reduced their ask by 25,000. So that creates $75,000. And I think you all saw a memo from the library director saying that the um, other 75,000 they can raise. Uh, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, so I uh, met with the library director, Anna Litton, today. She very kindly met with me and also with Julie Lehman, the treasurer. And um, while we were there, just to confirm, the um, 75,000 can come from the library trust fund. So that has been the library trustees have agreed to that, but also she's confirmed it with the NBLC. I've got to get the acronym wrong, but the library building authority, um, that that is an acceptable place to get the money from. So remember, we had all these questions about yeah, where yeah. could it come from? And they feel strongly that it needs to be a warrant article to demonstrate town meetings support for this, but that using 75,000 from the library uh, trust is acceptable to them. Um, I also wanted to get, again, a firm answer from her. This has been the frequently asked questions that I asked the chair to send them about why it needed to be this year. Um, and she said that the last time they opened up the grant program was 2016. Um, they expect that they're going to get a lot of applications. She wants to be in this round. She doesn't think it's going to open for another few years. So it's not that we can just say, you know, put it off for another year. Um, and then I also discussed with her this question of uh, capital planning. And um, she's quite sure that even though the capital planning committee doesn't put placeholders in the capital plan for these large projects, that they, that is certainly on their radar and that, um, they're going to be ready to discuss it once we do have a plan from the, that we will uh, purchase with this 150 and right. I can say definitively, yeah. it is not on our radar, other okay. than as a theoretical, this is out there. Okay. But if there's any expectation that there's a um, placeholder for that. No, he's not a placeholder, no. Right. And, and, Depending on this for the new the new plot, so depending on those costs, um, there would be a strong possibility that the capital budget couldn't support that amount. So 150? No, not the 150. No, no, not the 150. About the, the ultimate final, the actual cost yeah. of constructing yeah. the building. So she had said that um, I don't want to make book. Um, that in her discussions with I assume Chris, uh, you know, that they had talked about rebuilding the Fox Library several times, several years ago when they had talked about the feasibility and so forth. Uh, but that they they won't put placeholders in. Right. But I'm just the level set expectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know if anybody at this point knows, mm -hmm. even has a decent estimate of what those costs are. Right. But I don't think it's very now. I, I don't know whether other, other commitments have been made. You know, involved in that. But, um, but I would wouldn't think that we could support the capital budget could support those costs without crowding everything else out. And even then, maybe not. So ultimately, the building would come from uh, private fundraising, some combination of private fundraising. Um, and, and, the and, and of course, the state yeah. matching, and then there would be some question about how much the town would put in, and then there's this large open question of whether it's the right. housing portion or whatever. Um, it really comes down to how big that nut is. Exactly, and I don't mean to okay. suggest that capital right. planning was was saying that the money okay. will be there, but she felt that she had had conversations with them, and it's on their radar that it's not, um, you know, coming out of that. But you're saying it's not. It's the only sort of on the radar I've ever heard is like this. This is out there, and we couldn't. The capital budget stop saying we could just down. The capital budget couldn't support sort of a big construction company. It would need to be 
bond as a token. Or that token, yeah. Token, yeah. yeah. But this is for not that, but planning. Right. Design. That's Perfect. what we're deciding right now. Annie, then El Tosti, so, and then Kofor and Michael. So I just want to say a couple of things about this. So first of all, if you look at the argument that Anna is making, what she's saying is, if we spend this $150,000, we get a $100,000 match to make a plan to renovate the Fox Library. Nobody knows exactly what that will cost. But we then have the possibility of applying for a grant of up to $17 million as one of the sources for paying for that building. We lose that opportunity if we don't appropriate this money which is not only $75,000 out of the budget and $75,000 from the larger trust fund. I don't think that we are obligated to apply for or spend any money constructing a building after we've done this planning, if that seems infeasible. We are not obligating ourselves to some huge future expenditure we are taking advantage of the possibility of funds that we will not have access to if we don't do this. So this is like, as someone who works for a lot of nonprofits to do a lot of grant applications, this is kind of what you do. You take your shot. You can always turn the grant down if it turns out it comes with too many strings or whatever. And Anna's very clear that she understands that a portion of this building costs will have to be privately raised. I know that the Cary Library in Lexington was renovated just one years ago entirely out of uh, privately raised funds in the town of Lexington. I don't think Arlington supports <laughs> libraries less than Lexington does. And I don't think we're talking about as much money as the Perry Library costs. And then there is the question of whether or not any money will be available in the capital budget. And I think that that the reason that it's not on the radar bill is because there's nothing to put on the radar right. until we have some kind of idea what it's going to cost. And if there is a housing component to this, it is not going to be something that's paid for with town funds. It's going to be paid for by a private developer, either HBA or some similar organization that's going to then purchase those air rights and build the building on top. And so it's putting that whole deal together in a pro forma that is the complicated part. So it feels to me like appropriating this money, especially when it's only $75,000, town managers are already identified is low risk for possible high return and no obligation to continue beyond the stage. So there's my pitch. I'll pass. Will this money be spent if we don't get the grant? Yeah. No. Uh, you mean if we don't get the hundred thousand dollar match? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh. And, and not only the 75, our 75 wouldn't be spent until the other 75 is raised to match the one to, to the yeah. 150. Yeah. And then and nothing gets spent unless we get the state matching grant. Right. That's what I understand. Because I, I think maybe we could delineate that. No money to be spent absent the grant. Right. Um, or so we draft the one. So for okay, so is the matching you say it's 100,000 mm -hmm. the explainer from you, it says here that the grant will be worth in October of 50,000 for planning Is it 50 or is it 100? No, I think it's 100. Well, first time I was saying it's 50, so it's 100. 100 was what Anna said when she was here. Yeah. Think right, but it says it. You're talking the state grant. Yeah. The yeah. State the, the, but in the response to FinCon that she constructed yeah. today in the memo, I'm just trying to get clarity on I do not know unless that is the first. I wrote down that it's up to 60%. Maybe that's 100,000, 60% of uh, 150. No, I think no, no. I think the 60% is well, of the building right. cost eventually. And capped at 70. Right. And capped at 70. So if the building costs $50 million, we're not getting it. Anyway. Yes. Well, Rebecca may have an answer. You have the answer, Rebecca? I don't, I'm sorry. I was going to help. Okay. Um, no. So, when, so, so, any other questions? No, that's not right. Michael. You know, I was in favor of this when the library people came and made their presentation. And I changed my mind after listening to the town manager talk about 
the amount of unknown maintenance, not even deferred or assessed or off book, just unknown maintenance at town hall and other town properties. And then looking back at what the library proposal was, sure, I understand the appropriate little bit, proportionally a little bit of money now to get in line for some potentially much bigger grants later. That sort of leaps over the question of, well, do we need grandiose design that the library presented to us? Yeah. They didn't design. present a design. There's no design. There is no design. No, there will be a design. Yes, that's, that's the purpose of it. That's, the that's right. It. And it will be, in my opinion, much more grandiose than the problem they presented to us. The building is not ADA compliant yep. and it lacks good, good meeting space. Mm -hmm. Yet they did not bring to us the alternative, even between the zero option of do nothing and the plan they presented. Even the intermediate option of, well, what would it cost to make the building ADA compliant and provide some more meeting space? But that's not before us. We're not. It, we're not. Yes. We're not. We're not voting, voting to they, build. Uh, we're not voting in this instance to build. To build any type I know. of building. I know. The only thing before us is appropriating. Years, Twenty-three oh, years. Michael, wait a minute, Michael. We're being asked to approve an appropriation of seventy-five thousand dollars to be used. To, for a match up to a hundred thousand, I see in in what was given to us for a design. That's it. We're not being asked whether we think there should, should be a new building or not, or what kind of building that should be. We're limited. Do we want to spend seventy five thousand dollars for a design? Well, spend seventy five thousand dollars to match an additional hundred thousand to be used for design. That's all is as before us. And I don't think we should be talking about whether we want a new building or not a new building, whether we want housing on top or ADA compliance or not. The question is, do we want to give the libraries this money for a matching grant for design? So uh, Alan Jones is yeah. that gentleman. Um, Daryl. Do you know why they didn't put in a capital request for them? Because the problems would have had to fund it. So, particular the, they need a vote of town meeting. They require oh, they need a vote of town meeting. Like, in order to meet the sorry, sorry, in order to meet the requirements of the Massachusetts Public Library Construction Program, I had to be a warrant for oh, okay. And so okay. then I asked her. Could the money be moved in a series of warrant articles from capital planning to, you know, could we have a warrant article that somehow moved money from the capital plan to this and then extended it? And she was not under the impression that the, that, that could have been done. But the, the construction program requires that it be a okay. warrant article. Right. Your next one was Rebecca. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to point out in response to um, Al's question about whether. We're only spending it if we get the match. And at the very bottom of the um, town warrant on Article 55, it specifically says if said MPLCP grant is. So only if we get the grant, we'll be spent. Um, Charlie and then I'll pass. <clears throat> Madam Chair, with all due respect, I think your limitation of the question is wrong. We can't legitimately discuss spending this money. If we can't discuss what the ultimate goal is, otherwise we'd be voting to spend fifty or seventy-five thousand dollars for no purpose. Al Um, I was against this until the library, as they say, put their money where their mouth was, mm -hmm. uh, in the trustees, and I share some of Michael's concerns, but I think. Getting it down to seventy-five thousand dollars in general fund money makes it a reasonable gamble, especially since none of it gets spent unless we get the grant. So, I'd like to make a motion that we appropriate uh, seventy-five thousand dollars to be used together with seventy-five thousand dollars worth of library trust funds 
So in the article, it has the whole amount uh, to be spent for uh, library assessment, planning, feasibility. You could use the language from the article. I would, I provided. Would, I would say to be spent to obtain a matching grant. To be spent to obtain a matching grant. Yeah. That's even more restrictive. Yeah. Provided, however, no money shall be spent absent said, said grant. Second. Any other questions? Josh. Um, I think Alan Tosi originally had a question about the timing. In the FAQ, it said they need to vote by the 24th of May, I think. And I thought there was an issue with the secretary of uh, town meeting ending later on or whatever. And I mean, we might have to, the, the, whatever we do might not get acted on fast enough. Rebecca, do you have the answer? Um, I asked her about that specifically, and she has asked the relevant person there, and if the vote has taken place by their deadline, they are not worried about certifying the vote. Any other questions? Comments? All right, there's been a motion by Altasi, seconded by, I think, Annie. Um, all in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed? One opposed. Any abstain? One abstain. All right. Article 55. Um, now I'm going to flip. Uh, um, the Disability Commission. Sophie, mm -hmm. so I, I'll I'll set the stage here. My understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the Disabilities Commission needs to tariff. They're not asking for any more money than what they got last year, which was twenty thousand. Correct. And we've gotten some budgetary information from them, and it shows about eighteen thousand plus that they spent or are spending or may spend. Right. Well, have anything else to add? I think I would note, so for those that are relatively new, we've been looking specifically at the Disability Commission. This is our third year of sort of focusing on them to see um, if the funds are being spent according to the mission, sort of mission. And it was determined that um, some of the funds were being spent where maybe facilities should be spending the funds. So after a look the first year and, sent, and trying to get more information, we voted the same level. Then the second year, we brought it down 5,000 saying, this is really money that should be coming from the town. You guys need to be spending it on other things. Um, this year, I have not spoken to anybody on the Disability Commission. Um, I've only spoken to the ADA coordinator, Tim Ross, or gotten email from him. We haven't got responses to questions that I've sent. Um, I looked at their website uh, Monday as compared to when I looked at it at the beginning of our meetings, and the commission has really decreased. I, and this is something they've raised before. Um, they're down to four members, one being a town appointed employee. Um, and the three other members, or the chair, it's a new chair this year. Um, her term term ends in 2026, and then the three others end in 2024. There's a call out to fill vacancies, but it's supposed to be nine people. Um, so we have, I think we have, you know, I have, we have questions on the budget, but we don't really have anybody available to answer those questions. So. I think my recommendation is go ahead and we level. They gave us some detail, or Tim Ross did. I don't know if he did it himself or if he had participation. Um, I think we give them one more year to see how it goes and, and really try to see what's going on with filling those vacancies. Um, it's very difficult because uh, general law requires that a majority of the 
board have disabilities, right? And so what I told us before is it's very difficult to run things when the majority have disabilities. Um, if, if there's not also the able body or you know help from other volunteers. Um, my difficulties, I haven't been able to go to meetings. I would love to. Uh, they have recently with those new chairs switched to Zoom meetings. So that should make it easier. But of course, it's when I have all my kids. So it doesn't for me. Um, if anybody on the committee would like to help me in reaching out to them more during the year or attending meetings or doing Zoom meetings, I would love to help. I, I've gone to many of the meetings in the past. Right. The last call. Right. It's really big. big. Factor in some of these things for an activity, um, right? I mean, they so they had there was a you know, Paul, right, passed yeah, in passed December, away. yeah, he was just a terrific, right? And he was very yeah. involved, although yeah. he's not who I uh, dealt with. But I have some flexibility, I've gone to tons of their meetings in the past, so I know, I mean, I know anybody now, <laughs> I knew people before. Right. But, um, but yeah, but I think they need, they need help if we want them to to continue. So I recommend um, voting the twenty thousand. Second. Any questions? No. All right. All in favor of twenty thousand for the disabilities commission? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. I know Sophie, it's been a it's been a chore for you. And thank you, Jennifer, for willing to help out for next year's budget. Um all right. Um so a couple of more committees. Um what we have. We had the water bodies working group come before us with a request for 120,000. We had the scenic byway with a request for 5,000. Is that the total? Yes. And human rights was a request for 10,000. Yes. Is that correct? All right. And I believe. Along with the two fifty, because it's twenty five thousand dollars request. Those are the remaining committees that we have yet to uh, approve budgets for. Um, this is what I understand from speaking with the town manager and deputy um, was that there was a, an email sent out to all of the committees back in December saying, "Do you anticipate asking for any more money?" Than what we have. And he heard nothing. So when I talked to him yesterday and said, Did you understand water bodies is asking for 120000 He was stunned. Mm -hmm. um, and he did not know about the Chief Flyway um, or the Human Rights Commission either until, I guess, we reached out to him about the Human Rights Commission. Um, so, um, I, I the, 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 we'll have a discussion and the vote is yours, but I'm feeling that there's sort of an end run around the town manager by the system that we have that people can come directly to us without having it vetted with, with the town manager. I'll also point out that um, if we increase these budgets, it has to come out of the appropriate budget because there's no other place to find that money. And I just want to put it out there, we just had an override. We're likely to have another one, maybe sooner than we promised the voters. Um, so um, I just want to put that out before we, just, we start discussing these three budgets. So we'll start with water bodies, which is the, the biggest, most complicated um, ask. So uh, Annie and then El Kelsey. So did the town manager say how much we thought they were going to ask for? Fifty thousand. So the seventy thousand is unexpected. Yeah. And this would throw the budget out of balance, or because it's more an article, it will be just taken out of one of the reserves. Yeah. So you know where to take it out of the override. Take it out. Of the that's the that's the bottom line when we 
zero will be down to the note. So, yeah, I'll talk. Are you finished, Mary? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, right. I see. Okay, um, the latest five year plan says in 2027, we're over $18 million in the hole. In fact, we have a million dollars in 26 we need to deal with. And so- And that's without solid waste. So uh, you said that the manager had asked all these committees whether they wanted an increase back in December and nobody responded? That's what he said. Okay. I, I think, uh, we need to level fund and I'd make a recommendation of uh, as much as a lot of what they're doing is really good. You know, we've been funding them right along and sometimes they'll have to spread things out. So I make a recommendation for the water bodies of 50,000. As much as it pains me, I'm going to second that. All right. Um, and then Carolyn. So I agree with Al's recommendation. Um, I just want to say, I think I have a slightly different rationale for getting there, which is, if I recall, um, Mr. Chapdelan, when he was town manager, stopped wanting to hear about the committees and commissions, and he sent them right here, right? right? Which is why they just come here. Um, we have a new town manager who wants to see them ahead of time. And I think one of our obligations as a committee is to support the new town manager in his ability to sort of you know, the proverbial herding of cats, right? Like, so, you know, just, you know, it is what it is. It's chain here. We have change here with a new town manager and you gotta just say no because we've got to, you know, reform a process so we can have the authority moving forward. Um, I, I understand where you're coming from, Dean. On the other hand, um, in my email to him when he said, wait, I don't know anything about this, my response was, you're the first town manager in the last three that I've worked with who's ever asked. And so I'm not quite sure what's going on. And I don't know enough of the history. And so that's why he didn't hear from anyone, because that wasn't the policy. Now, we're going to level fund them. That's fine. We're going to level fund them. Um, the uh, HR director and, the, and Alex are working on... Um, a back of the envelope cost for liability and staffing for a harvester. So we'll actually have real numbers in the future. And I'll spend this year with them getting their act together so they can do a little better with the present presentation and talking with the town and the DPW in the leader over the course of the year. I'll also point out that the working group and I, I, Carolyn, you can comment on this too, that there is a town employee on that group. David He's been Moore. on me for three or four months, so that's why he hasn't been involved in the last four months. And he ju back. literally just got back this week. He was in our meeting the day before, but um, that was his first interaction with us, aside from a couple of emails on Monday. Um, I'm also point out, and please correct me, Alan and Tara, I, so far, we have level funded everybody else, right? I think um, we dropped a few. We dropped two. Oh, yeah. Was there, I can't get into that doc. I can't like get over to that tab. Was there, are you in there right now? Oh, who's AL? Oh, oh you're in there right now. Oh, um, I don't know what it is, but I just, the bandwidth the, on the internet is just really bad. But um, would you mind going to the um, committee and commissions tab down there? And then um, we'll ask for an increase. And then just scroll over to the left for, for Columbia. So Conservation Commission asked for an increase, Human Rights Commission, Scenic Byway. Yeah, so and no other increases and two decreases. Yeah. Okay, anyone else have any questions, grants, and then Alan Dill? Yes, thank you. Um, the concern, I, um, one, when you get together with militia, I don't know. Half facetious, half not. But they should maybe watch that video of the of those of the, of the, of the they, they presented everything so well. I mean, it's, it'd be a great instructional thing for them. The concern I have is kind of the direction that they're 
they're not making any progress. It's kind of like the mile of pipe, you know, kind of like these ground on the mile of pipe. But they're not making any progress. Um, maybe they should try something different or something. Um, and and like, I know we keep saying that, but if they're not even, it's not even working. It's just so, so maybe you should try something, some other, other, other alternatives. Another thing I'll add in my discussion with the town manager, he, he mentioned potentially dredging. Uh, dredging as an option that may be more long-term solution, but way more expensive. So that goes to your point, Grant, of what's the alternative here? Um, Alan Jones and Charlie and so forth. Well, a couple of quick things. Remember, a couple of years ago, they came to us with a proposal for a harvester, and last they year. sort of got shot down last year. So we can't, you know, yep. they, I'm not surprised they didn't come back. Now, the other thing I can just point out, they do have $47,000 in the fund, which if there's a couchy emergency or something, they could maybe draw off that and then come next year with a, a crest to, you know, something else to replenish. Are you talking about what they have left this year? Or, well, I was saying at the end of the year, 47,047, and they were planning on spending $20 for the they, they were planning on spending 141,000, 120,000 coming from appropriation, and the other 20,000 coming from their retained earnings. So I'm just saying they have 47,000. They could spend that and more. In case, you know, one of the, one of the issues in the water body is you never know what the algae is going to do next May. Part so, of the other reason for that fund is because their their budget carries six months different from the town's budget, and yes. so they always have to have an extra six months in there to cover the expenses because of the way the contracts work for the contractors. So that I'm not sure that forty seven is actually just lying around. I'm wondering if that's for the next six months of last year. Well, no. If you look at twenty five, they they're. Total expense budget is one hundred forty-one thousand dollars. They're asking for one hundred twenty thousand, and the retained earnings going down twenty-one thousand. So oh, I think they were oh, planning okay. on spending it right. FY twenty-five. Okay. But the point is that it, you know it, it's like snow removal. Right? It, it, there's a lot of uncertainty right. in their thing, so they need some buffer. I think they have sufficient buffer. Is what I'm probably pointing out. But yeah, let, let's stop bugging them about the harvester because we turned that down last year. Yeah. Maybe well, going forward it might be a good thing, but that's. Cool. Sophie and Charlie? I think my concern, what I don't hear enough about, is what we're doing to get Lexington to pay, right? For the reservoir piece of it. It seems like we're just willing to pay the whole cost because if we do half, it's not going to work. And right. so we just are like, okay, so I guess we'll pay all of it. But that really annoys me <laughs> because why would Lexington pay if they listen to our meetings and the presentations and they're like, okay, well, we're going to pay for Lexington? Okay, well, then. Yeah, why right. buy a cow? They're asking for double as much. Right. We pay? So, hey, I'm not sure I'm happy with that piece of it as a message yeah. for <laughs> So, I, uh, I basically oppose uh, Mr. Tostig's motion in uh, several reasons for that. One is that um, I, I don't know the number, but we just spent millions of dollars over several years to rehabilitate the Arlington Reservoir, putting in new sidewalks and buildings, et cetera. Maybe you know what the total number was, Daryl. I don't, don't remember, but it's, it was fairly expensive. It was a multi-year product funded by both Capital Plan and the uh, um, CPA committee. And the, the water chestnuts, the water chestnut problem at um, the right. reservoir is is a maintenance issue, and if we're not going to, I mean, maybe John could recommend that we spend this money maintaining the the uh, town hall, but it's really a maintenance issue at the reservoir where we've put in an enormous capital investment, and it's it's a facility that's used by the citizens, extensively used, and, and I think it's um, unfortunately. You know, maybe the manager sent that email out, but I think that if the manager was really interested, he would be talking to this committee to find out what they're doing. And what I learned the other day is they're sort of operating on their own. I don't see them getting a lot of support from inside the DPW or, or, or elsewhere. Yeah, but he has, but he has David Morgan. Pardon? David Morgan, an employee, is 
Well, I'm, I'm just talking about right. what I heard from the committee. Okay. Right. Um, he, and again, he hasn't been available. For so why, yeah. I'm going to make a motion that um, instead of $120,000, that um, we, we take, um, let's see, we take uh, thirty-five thousand. They're proposing to spend seventy seventy thousand dollars on the um, on Spy Pond. Last year they spent twenty twenty-two thousand dollars. So if we reduce the seventy thousand by thirty-five thousand dollars, that um, it gives them thirty-five thousand dollars for Spy Pond. It also lets them spend the fifty-five thousand dollars that they want to spend on the reservoir. Which to me, if we spent X million dollars. To, to rehabilitate that reservoir so so people can use it, we we can't have have them go out there and not be able to walk around the beach or go into the water because of uh, water chestnuts. So um, the uh, the total they asked for is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. I would say um, if we go to if we take thirty five thousand off there, that would be eighty five thousand dollars. Did I do that right? Exactly. Yeah. And so the thirty five thousand will. Will probably prevent them from doing the pragmatics work. Well, they can spread that over. Yeah, no, I know, I know. They'll ask for it again next year. It's there's right. pragmatics that they have to take out at St. Elizabeth's, the land near St. Elizabeth's, and the land by the Elks or whatever the plug is that's right there. Well, it's it, the thirty-five thousand dollars was bringing them back up to what was appropriated in fiscal twenty-four. Uh, in fiscal twenty-four, and they only spent twenty-two thousand this year. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's it's a case of trying to come up with a, a reasonable response to what the need is. So Charlie, what's your what, what's the amount of the motion? Eighty five thousand dollars. Eighty five thousand. Um, I I just want to point out that we can't tell them you have to spend X number right. on that pond and that X number for fragments over there. Of course, because um, but I'm I'm, I'm proposing so they might say they they may there are. Would be kind of take eighty five thousand and put it all you know, in whatever. Right, and and if you if we vote for fifty five thousand or what fifty thousand, they can't spend it on anything. Right. So this is this is well, I think that's the money least... that they've been using for this past year to to the two weeks of harvesting at the res, plus other stuff. Which doesn't solve the problem. You know, I, right. I think that can't solve it. Right. I think if if we email both them and the David Morgan and I tell them. I mean I, I don't think they're gonna say no. They have to come back next year and ask for more money. Besides if you've noticed this isn't the type of group of people who's going to say no when when another group of people says please don't do that. It's I mean do you get that impression that this group is going to run off and do something all by themselves the way they presented? I, not. Yeah, I, I I don't feel like I have the expertise to decide what to do. All right, so we have a motion to level fund, which has been seconded. Charlie has a motion for eighty five thousand. Has it been seconded? Is there a second. Any other comments, questions? All right, we'll go with Al Tosti's motion first. All in favor of level funding water bodies at fifty thousand? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. All those opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fails. And six. All right. All in favor of Charlie's motion to appropriate eighty-five thousand for the water body water bodies group. Raise your hand. Twelve. All those against? One, two, three, four, and eighty. Staying. All right. Water bodies gets eighty-five thousand dollars. Scenic byway. They are looking for three thousand dollars on top of their two thousand that they got last year, which they. Um, are going to use for the website that we share with multiple accounts. How do people feel about that? Well, I'll make that motion. Second. 
make a motion to board. I I move that we approve a five thousand dollar budget for the senior pilot committee. Second. Sorry, how much? Five thousand dollars. Carolyn. Oh no 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 sorry I, I was just saying five. Five. All right. There's a motion to give senior pilot five thousand. Um, the second Okoski. <clears throat> Is this because of? I'm trying to remember. Is this because of the 250th anniversary, or they just want it from now on? I think it's because the 250. Because if it's one year for the 250, and then it goes back to the 2000. I think that's where they were headed. They wanted to. They wanted to do some work on the website to to connect to the 250th and, and coordinate activities coordinate with activities other towns along things. along this this automated route. Yeah, and, it's, so, and this will be another website. Mm -hmm. The town. Another thing that tonight says we asked the budget be increased from the usual three thousand because of the upcoming two fiftieth anniversary work. We need to update the BRSP website to include all the activities two fiftieth. So I think it's an update. In other words. And their budget is two thousand, not three thousand. They say it's three thousand, but we gave them two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. so they're asking. More than double their budget. Carol, I'm concerned that um, Clarissa sort of described the situation where they've lost control of the website, which yeah. is a little, um, little concerning. But I, um, you know, I, I guess I support this because I, I, I trust that Clarissa will exert the appropriate amount of pressure to recover it. If not, maybe we can get Alan Jones to go out there and twist it, twist it on. <laughs> They're paying for a website. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> uh, so, do, so do a lot of other. It's a WordPress site. You can do it on their screen. <laughs> other other yes, comments. Can, yeah, but can you can you reverse engineer it yourself? Uh, other we we don't have much time. Other comments, questions. There's a motion for five thousand dollars. It's been seconded. Anybody else have anything? Add. All right, all in favor of, of giving the scenic flyway is five thousand dollars. Raise your hand. Two, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Any opposed? One opposed, any abstaining? All right. Um that's scenic flyways. Um let's do the two hundred and fiftieth. Um, they are looking, they are, have reduced their budget request for 25,000. I'm sorry, which one was this? It's the 250th yeah, committee. Is there a motion for 25,000? Uh, so moved. Second. All right. Any um, questions? Fred Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> So they've reduced their budget really to accommodate the library. Um, all right, all in favor of $25,000 for the 250th committee, raise your hand. Fifteen, opposed, staying, one. All right, that's two, 25,000 for the 250th committee. And the last one is the Human Rights Commission. Um, um, the Ellen Jones and Carolyn. Okay, so they want that. an increase of $2,500 to get their own email system. And I had two objections to that. One is I don't think it's a good idea for anybody representing a town, particularly human rights, to go off and have an unmanaged email system. And second of all, that's two and a half times more than they should have paid. So I went back and forth with Jim Feeney. And he, he agreed that having an unmanaged Google system is probably a bad idea, but also he said, no, I, the IT department will provide them with the email systems they want. That it's you know, more, than, more than they need. It's what we're using. Um, so I'm going to uh, propose their original budget was 7,500, nothing for the email system. Now, in a perfect world, it may be that each commission, and including us, should have in our budget the cost of the email and have it grade back up and grade back to IT. In, in, a, in a ideal world, we would increase the IT budget, the expense budget, to handle an additional so many accounts. But uh, I, Jim doesn't seem to think that's necessary. So 
Um, I, I, you know, so basically, we have a promise in email that the IT department will provide them with the email and shared servers they need, uh, which is why they need to take the 2500 off. Carolyn and then Annie? Yeah. Just an aside, which we just chose not to mention, was that cost for those emails for them would be $1,200. So yes, they're still off by double, but, but it's still a $1,200 well, cost just for the emails. Lots of that to the IT department. Well, for now, because at one point he was saying, well, maybe, oh, was it you? Well, no, it was me saying that. I think we should probably be billed for the email accounts we're using, but we're not. So the precedent is that the commission, committees and commissions do not get it. IT just sort of gives it to them. In a, in a fair world, would increase the IT expense when it's covered. Email is free, right? What? Email is free, right? <laughs> no, six bucks a month. <laughs> uh, so, I understand where you guys are going, Alan, but it doesn't speak to my concern, right? And my concern is twofold. One is that um, emails from the town, the town email address, are FOIAable. And yes. I don't believe that a person sending a complaint to the Human Rights Commission would have sufficient privacy expectations if they're emailing to a town email address, unless we address that in some way. Okay, okay. let me finish. And my other concern is that there are people who may want to report an incident to the Human Rights Commission who might hesitate to send said email to a town email address if the person they are have had a bad experience with is an employee of the town. So that's my one concern with this. And I don't know whether or not the IT department can speak to that in some way, mask the emails, do whatever, but we gotta do something. Uh, Alan? Well, does the town's legal department and human resources department and other things like that have non town email addresses? In other words, I think that's a problem that's this is easy different. to solve. This is different than that. There, the answer to that is just bring someone email it and not email it. But, I, but anyone who deals with a government body legally, it, there's, there are public records yeah. laws. There's no, yeah. And in fact, because there are public record laws, yeah. we probably should have town emails and not anything but town emails. Yeah. And that's why we use them. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's exactly why we have them. So, um, I, I was just going to say with a FOIA concern. Mm -hmm. I think the human rights people said like their HR, you know, the non-town emails that are using, they still think are for it. I think they're very, right there, they're yeah, very aware of that. So um, yeah, I still think they well, the other concern. Well, just, they're just not as recoverable and certain with the great, which is the legal problem. I think. Anyway, other questions? Al Jones, did you have a motion for Little Clement? Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. Any other comments? All right. All, level funding. all in favor of level funding, Human Rights Commission, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fifteen. Four against. One. Any abstentions? We did a lot tonight, thank you. What we have left is the Prudent Investor Warrant article. Um, we have the um, FY24 amendments and what the schools and the town manager would like is for us to make up that $400,000 difference for the schools through our reserve fund. We have the school budget. And we have the last override, last budget. And I think that's it. Hopefully we will do all of those on Monday. Um, if we do, we're, we're done with our business. And then I'm thinking we won't. We might have a meeting scheduled for the first week in April as a backup in case we need to revote anything or take any business. But I kind of hoping that we'll meet on Monday finish all of our business, we'll get the report done, and then we won't um, have to meet again. But we can talk more on Monday. So we be, should we be prepared to go beyond 10 o'clock? Yes. 
I think, I think, and I think, uh, I don't know how much the prudent investor will take, um, but I think it's doable to do our business by 10 o'clock. Uh, will we have the school? Uh, I'm going to send, basically, I think everybody knows the schools lost their uh, CFO <clears throat> earlier, so they've been kind of struggling yeah. to get him. Mike Mason? Yeah. Mike Mason. Is, oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. His, his family had a child two weeks early or three weeks early, he so he was going out on leave early, oh, yeah. and then this was like in I don't know, January, February, and then sort of in the midst of that leave, he announced that he had a new position and was leaving. So actually, it's Friday is the last day. So that is kind of, you know, made it more difficult for them to pull together a budget, and the budget's been kind of revised on a daily basis. So... I keep saying, you know, send it out, and then they say, this is not So anyway, I will send a copy to Tara tonight. If any of you have downloaded an earlier version, there are some changes. Um, I would expect that there might be some changes before Monday. But the, the basic bones of it are all there. They're just trying to kind of uh, you know, make sure it's 100% correct. All right, so that would be the main course of business, Alan. Okay, good question. The, 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 if we approve the $400,000 transfer, would that go into the article of revising the FY24's budget? That will go into the, our, the article. Um, I don't know. There, there's one that, that we voted no action to revise the FY24 budget. Is that what I don't think we voted on that. I think we have oh. not done that yet because okay. I I knew that we would figure out where that money is going to come so and go. Well, ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.